let me introduce uh, Joan. Joan uh, is um, um, from Alastria, uh, Alastria uh, blockchain uh, ecosystem from Spain. Uh, and uh, he's going to share with us insights from Spain, what's happening in the blockchain Web3 sector. And well, thank you very much, John, for joining us. Well, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for for having having me and, and having us. Uh, uh, Alastria blockchain ecosystem, as you as you mentioned, in this in this amazing environment, <laughs> trying to figure out how to do things here in this metaverse. But yeah, hopefully you can see me. My avatar is wearing a cup. I'm not that much of yes. cups. That is why. I do these things in Avatar. I'm more. I'm more into the into the corporate world. But yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, give, I'll provide a bit of a explanation of what's happening in the Spanish ecosystem, and also a bit of a hint of how we look at things um, from a last year perspective. Um, I'm sure that, that other European colleagues, on the Europe and European Union colleagues, specifically someone from Greece, I heard. As, uh, is also one of the 27 member states of the bloc. Uh, uh, are enjoying an amazing moment um, when it comes to, to, to digital assets. Um, this phenomenon, uh, uh, fortunately, is having a regulatory backing. Why? Due to two important pieces of regulation uh, that are available in the European Union uh, since 2023 and now 2024. I'm referring specifically the first one in 2023 was the pilot regime, the DLT pilot regime. is a super important regime. It's a pilot, as the name goes. Uh, it's not definitive, but it allows companies, European companies, to ask for certain exemptions uh, when it comes to licensing. Uh, in terms of tokenizing certain financial instruments, it's super important for the banking industry, for the financial services industry, as it deals with a new uh, breadth of, of 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 financial instruments that are similar to the traditional ones. But in this particular case, we can use DLT for issuing and commercializing them. And this is where rubber kicks the ground, uh, where primary markets um, um, coexist with secondary markets, and uh, is a way of providing more and more liquidity and, and, and promoting transferability of assets. And this is available in Europe since March 2023. And uh, I can tell you that lots of our members in Austria uh, presented their ideas Yes, into the sandbox of the of the of the European Central Bank, and also in the sandbox of the Bank of Spain, uh, and made all the way from the sandbox to the pilot regime, and they're already operating on top of the pilot regime. There are there's not much volume still, and uh, this is due to certain reasons that are under under review and under exploration now. But what I can tell you is that now there's incentive for issuers to to issue this type of instruments and also for dealers to be part of this new ecosystem so the good news there is that we have regulatory coverage and regulatory clarity and certainty to um to this part of the financial services market this is one and the second one more important i'm sure that uh, uh, that is being covered or is going or is going to be covered in length is the mica And Mika is available since June uh, 24 for the for the the, 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 the stable coins and is, it will be available the 30th of the of December of this year for the license the new licenses that the government is giving to the traditional VASPs the virtual asset service providers this way they could convert themselves into CASP into crypto asset service providers and be able to tackle uh, B2C clients when it comes to distributing crypto assets. 
more specifically cryptocurrencies, but also stable coins and other types of, of assets. Um, unfortunately, uh, there are still evolution of the of the regulation to come that are preventing the real world assets to flourish. Uh, we've seen lots of ideas in the ecosystem connected to real estate and also connected to yeah real world assets are not properly covered in this in the Spanish uh, in the Spanish regulation because we don't have the register uh, uh, role as other jurisdictions jurisdictions have as France and as Germany in the European Union. Once we have this registerer functionality, registerer role, we'll see more and more ideas in real estate, in tokenization of real world assets. Flourishing, why? Because Spain is quite an economy driven by real estate. And this is where we are all crossing our fingers have more clarity when it comes to regulation and see more and more business concepts and uh, use cases in the real estate realm. Um, so these two pieces are super relevant. It is also relevant uh, when it comes to the usage of public networks, the backing that we're trying to advocate for our members um, from the from regulators like BIS, and the uh, European Central Bank and whatnot uh, when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, uh, not punishing certain assets when they are deployed in a public net public network is to let the regulators realize that there's an amazing power in public networks and the ecosystem has to take profit of it and uh, if you punish public networks uh, you are preventing innovation to flourish and to do more and to be a lever of growth and competitiveness, which is what we are all looking for. Competitiveness, as you know, guys, is the name of the game. Draghi's report brings the the, 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 the need of competitiveness in Europe. And if we don't let innovation uh, uh, happen and scale, it, it's going to be difficult to compete with other jurisdictions. And last but not least, I would say that, um, and now when it comes to, to Spain and to Alastria specifically, uh, I have to say that we have more and more backing for the, from the public sector, from the government. As you know, there's a plan, a funding plan in Europe called Next Generation EU Funds. And the good news is that Alastria has been recipient of a an important uh, grant from the Spanish government that comes in cascade from my next generation EU fund in order to build a public permission network uh, to be available for the full ecosystem to deploy use cases on top of it. And this is very good news because maybe for unregulated um, industries, um, public networks are okay. You don't have big problem in terms of privacy and compliance, but there are other regulated sectors as telecom telecommunications, as financial services, as utilities, and many others that need a, a public permission network provided by the government, but built from the private sector as a way of public-private collaboration. And this is about happening in Spain. Hopefully, in a year time, we'll have a full, full network. Um, and not, not a best effort network, a real network with real compliance and real SLAs, service level agreements, and with a capability to sign contracts contracts with the users. And this is super, super good news. Alastria is going to be the driver for this implementation. And we are super happy to share this good news with you guys. And also, uh, put ourselves um, on your request. Uh, and when you think of anyone here connected, when you think of a use case that can be deployed and can serve the economy, or one of it, its sectorals, think in Alastria, as this is going to be a federated European network connected. 
the dollar. So with that, what is happening in EPSI and other European initiatives? So, so it's good times for for DLT. There's a there's, there's an amazing future ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, that was excellent talk. Just um, a couple of quick questions. Um, real as real as uh, real estate. Um, you mentioned growing uh, growing sector. Are there any developments on tokenized in real estate um lang uh, asset tokenization any further developments on, on that front is that already happening and the second one about the public private partnerships and this cohort that you mentioned is taking uh, these enterprises is their funding this is a dedicated funding a pot available for to support these smes uh yeah so these are the two questions lovely thank you for the questions yeah um when it comes to real estate that the, the thing is that we don't have lots right. of uh startups well, i won't say lots of but uh, a handful of startups trying to tackle this specific part of the market the tokenization of real estate and the fragmentation of the real estate for investors and also for for, for owners when it comes to soil when it comes to buildings when it comes to flats departments yeah houses uh, what we see is that under spanish jurisdiction under spanish uh, legal framework you're not allowed to tokenize the real estate itself why because it's a is a is a is a piece of is an asset that is not able it's not uh, eligible for for representing it virtually and the shortcut or the the, the, the way around that the, 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 the way we we, we we found to do so is tokenizing or creating a company that is the owner of the real estate and then you can tokenize the equity of the company it's a bit of a shortcut but it brings some legal problems when it comes to titularity when it comes to ownership of this equity of the company and how far are you from the real estate asset and yeah. this is something that provides some some headache to the owners and to the investors that are thinking of investing in this type of assets how far you are from the asset being uh, the equity shareholder so this is what we have to await a bit for the regulation to evolve and to allow this type of tokenization is it's, it's not there still but we are we are talking to regulators and advocating for our members to have some clarity in the short term i cannot tell you when but we're all awaiting for this to come uh, this is the first one second one when it comes to public private collaboration is very nice concept but it's difficult to bring to reality uh, now and I was, was referring in my last part of, the, of my of my talk. We have a contract that um, that says that we are recipient for a for a relevant amount of money from this next generation EU. It is double digit millions. It's not a penny. It's not a pocket money. <laughs> I mean, it's a relevant chunk of money to build a project. Network. And it's something that we, we just closed. So, and this is public, and we can say. So, yeah, there's real funds, real um, uh, relevant amount of funds dedicated to this specific part of the tech. That, as you can imagine, we've been trying to convince the government to deploy funds in tech, deploy funds in things that are a lever for growth, competitiveness, competitiveness, employment and is the segue to to be competitive in our generation and also for the new generations to come